Okay, uh, let's define a very important terminology here. For any given integer a with having relative prime with m, the solution of ax is congruent to 1 modulo m is called an inverse of a modulo m. And we already to check, we should have unique congruent solution for this equation before, right? Because right now, a and m are relative prime, so we're expecting one congruent solution, right? And we call them a inverse of a for modulo m. Okay, please keep that in your mind. In later chapter, we are going to need this one seriously. Okay, okay let's check it. Uh, when we have an inverse of a modulo m, uh, we can use it to solve any congruency of the form like this by simply uh, multiplying that inverse on both sides. So let's say a by is the, uh, one of the inverse of a modulo m because it's a congruency solution. So whenever we find one integer to satisfying that, then just by simply adding m, you are going to have another one and another one like that. So there are infinitely many of them. So this a bar could be any number of them. So let's, that's why we can say it's a inverse of a, right? But they have exactly the same remainders after divide by them, right? So keep that one in your mind. So anyway, if you find one integer, which is an inverse of a modulo m, then clearly a times a bar or a bar times a should be congruent to 1 modulo m. So on both sides, if you multiply a bar, then because it's the same number, so we can keep that one. We already checked this one in, in, in the previous part of this section. And a bar times a is 1. So 1 times x is x. Should it be in congruent to a bar times b modulo m. So it's very easy to find the solution for that kind of equation. If we have these forms, right?